Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Mailbag. This thing is special because no doubt you've read the title. This is a Alice 110-1983 special. And uh, I'll just say none of this is sponsored. I bought this with my own money. Uh, if you have watched some Julian Eilert videos, you'll know that Alice 110-1983 is an eBay seller that he buys a lot of his stuff from. Uh, I usually buy from whoever is the cheapest, but there was an eBay coupon going on and I wasn't sure what I wanted, so I browsed Alice's store and found uh, five or six items that I would like to take a look at. And so here we are. So without further ado, actually let's see what the descriptions say. One times expansion board module, one times digital voltmeter module, one times expansion board module, one times expansion board module, and one times bulb transistor. So let's see what kind of goodies we have in store. That's interesting. I'm not sure if this is the only, if these are the only things I've ordered. I thought I had ordered some more stuff. Maybe some of these are wrapped together. We'll see. Oh yeah, okay. There we go. Well then, where do we start? Let's work our way from mundane, or at least the most mundane, to the most interesting. So this here does not look interesting at all. But what it is, it is a 100 mil by 60 mil by 25 mil thick project box. So it's just a plastic box that you pop open. Ooh, might need a screwdriver for this one. Pop open and you can build electronic circuits in here. Um, I like this size, pretty small, right? Fits in the palm of my hand, can make something small, but yet still at this zoom level, I can have it on top of my bench here and I can show you in the video while I do other things over here. So I bought this just as a test to see what it was like. And if I like them, I'm gonna buy a few more. These are a buck 57 Canadian. Um, all these prices are at the time of ordering. So if you go over to Alice 110 1983's eBay store, it might be a little bit different right now. But yeah, just a simple little box has a four mounting pegs, if you can tell. One, two, three, four. Clips together. It seems like it clips together quite nicely. But yeah, nothing to it. It's just uh, somewhere to put your electronics projects to semi-permanentize them. Not waterproof or anything, I don't think, but you can run a bead of silicone around here. But yeah, nothing too special to see here. Next up are these chrome things. And what these are... If I can get them open. These are chrome mounting uh, hardware. See with the little, little uh, threads here and a little nut. And this is to mount a five mil LED, just a standard five millimeter LED like this guy these guys into a box like the this project box for example so how it works is you've got this little uh, diffuser and you've got this little chrome thing and you stick your LED up through there I don't know if you can tell but it comes in like that then I believe you press just press this on top like that there we go so it'll diffuse oh no actually I'm completely wrong your LED just goes straight through here like that and it looks like the legs of your LED go through this there we go that should lock your LED in place shouldn't be able to push it back through hmm. I don't know if I really did that right interesting well, I guess I'll have to look up how these things work now, won't I? But anyways, it's supposed to make your LEDs look a little bit nicer, a little bit more professional. 
and then you just yeah bolt this onto a case or something so you have a chrome bezel like that. I'm going to go check the listing real quick just to make sure that this is for 5mm LEDs because they do seem to fit a little loosely in there. But uh, 20 of these, so I've got two bags of 10 I guess, and 20 of these were $2.53. It's actually a little bit expensive, but I figured it would add a nice little professional touch to something that I'd want to permanentize in a box like this. But yeah, nothing too special here. That's why it's at the bottom of the list. We had a look at these. Now we can move on. Next up are these five modules here. And what these modules are, they are lithium ion uh, charging boards. So these are the standard fare on uh, eBay. It's basically a charging board that takes uh, 5 volts in and charges a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery. I have some of these, but these here are a little bit special. These are a little bit more expensive than the regular ones because they have battery protection built in. So they have this IC here, which does the charging and the um, the charging and the charge termination, and that is a 4056A. And then they have this section here, which is the battery protection. So you can use unprotected cells with these, and they won't over discharge, they won't over current. Um, basically, prevents them from catching on fire if you're, um, you know, giving the equipment to somebody who isn't very good with lithium ion batteries or isn't very good at uh, maybe uh, following long term directions. So this is great. You can uh, set this onto an 18650, and it shouldn't catch on fire. Now I do say shouldn't, because still these are from China, they're untested at the moment. I just got them by the mail, right? So don't actually know if they'll work. They will have their own video where we're going to test them out. But in the meantime, we can just plug this in and see if it even lights up. Something should light up to give us a sign of life. Oh, there we go. Little blue LED. So that one works. And this one here blue LED, so this one also works. Um, this one, all five of these were $2.34 Canadian, and it's pretty cool that they're panelized like that. They come with the uh, panels just scored up, and you can uh, just break them apart like that. Oop, I don't know if the... Interesting, this one here doesn't seem like it was uh, scored properly. Yeah, that one either. There is a score there. I'm not sure if I'll actually damage the boards by trying to break this off. Oh, there we go. This guy. These two, and there. So yeah, five pieces of these, so about 50 cents a pop. That's not too bad at all. Alright, on to the next one. Next up are these five LED uh, surface mount sort of circular things. They look like they're made for, I don't know, some sort of flashlight perhaps? I'm not quite sure, but I do know that these things were pretty cheap. Uh, so five of these for a buck thirty Canadian. And I was just intrigued as to what this was and what it's for. So it's just basically six LEDs, a uh, surface mount, 5730s, so 57 in this direction, so 5.7 5 in this direction and uh, 3 mil in that direction. And there's a positive and a negative on each. This again are panelized. This is on an aluminum substrate, although it's incredibly thin. I'm pretty sure this will need another sort of heat sink. But yeah, I figured we would, uh, we would try to figure out what this is together. So, panelized, I'll just pop up all the panels while we're at it. There we go. That's a bunch of scrap. Okay, and uh, yeah, there's a plus and a minus. There's text here, 5730. This says uh, 2B3C, I'm not sure, but on the listing it says 
uh, 3S, 2P, or 2P, 3S, meaning there's uh, three LEDs in series, and that's paralleled twice. And if you follow the tracks, let's see if I can get the light correct here. Uh, let's see. Start by the positive here. I'm gonna try to. There we go. If you see the tracks, the positive here seems to go off to both these, and then down the negatives here, around the positive pad right there, to the positive side of these two, and these two go to over here. There we go, you see the track here? Goes to the positive of this, and then the bottom of these two go to the negative. So it tells me there's actually three pairs of these in series, and I'm guessing it's going to be 9 volts because the listing doesn't say how many volts these should take. But usually they're about 3 volts per white LED, maybe a bit more. Uh, and there's 3 in series, so it should light. I don't have uh, current limiting on my power supply right now. It's not active. I turned it off because I want to see how much current this will draw. So there's the power supply. I can get it to stay on screen. There we go. So 9 volts. Uh, positive is my green lead. Negative is the black. Okay, and I'm just going to touch these onto the contacts. And I'll switch this to... Oops. Switch this to amps. So it could give me up to 3 amps here. Hopefully not. I'm going to move that just a little bit. Okay, it won't help if my fingers are on it though. All right, here goes. Okay, so we've got nine volts on it. And it's giving us 37 milliamps, 36 milliamps. So not a lot, 40. So I don't think this is a nine volt light, light anymore. I think this is actually a 12 volt light. Let's see if we can bring that up to 12. There we go. Okay. This risks being a lot brighter. Make sure this is in shot. Negative there and positive here. There we go. That's a lot brighter. Looks like I'm getting peaks of about 400 milliamps. Oops, I slipped off the pad there. Yeah, 400, maybe 450 milliamps, and it's actually quite reasonably bright. These are nice little modules. I might use these in um, makeshift flashlights in the future. It's still kind of cool. I'll have to do some videos testing the characteristics of these things. They are cool white, but hey, for, you know, a buck thirty for all five, that's not a bad deal at all, but quite interesting nonetheless. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Next item up is this little submersible pump. So this thing is pretty tiny. It's got these extremely small gauge wires. Maybe I even have uh, an idea on how small. Um, 22 gauge yeah it's like 22 gauge but there's solder on it so it could actually be 24 gauge this is supposed to run between 3 and 6 volts this was uh, 2 bucks and uh, let's see how much current it draws I have my power supply over here let's see if I can get this to stay up here this time Okay, set to, I'm going to drop it down, I'm going to set it to 3 volts, set at 3 volts, okay, and I'm going to put black on black, and green on red. I don't know how deep you could put this into the water, because I don't think these connections would be great to have exposed, but here it goes. 
Okay, so we're showing three volts here. You can probably hear it in the mic. If I hit OK, we got uh, 200 and something milliamps. We're going to try to bring it up to its max, about 6 volts. That's cool, you can actually run this by USB then, if it runs up to up to 6 volts. Just don't know how many amps it'll pull at 6 volts. Oh, it's really going now. And it has three, 300 and something milliamps. So that's not too bad. I was feeling the wind coming out of there. Uh, it's not really good to run a pump dry, although this one um, doesn't seem to have the blades touching anything. It's just uh, freewheeling in there, so I think it's okay. But this is not an accurate depiction of the current that it'll pull. For that, we're going to need some water. You see, what water does is it actually slows down the uh, spinning speed here and puts a load on the electric motor that's inside here, which I don't know if you can tell, but it's just about that wide. And so I'm going to dump this into the water here. Uh, it's not fully submerged, but it's enough because it's only taking it in from the bottom here. It actually has these standoffs to hold it off, up off the bottom. I'm going to try not to make a mess. So we have three volts set here. I'm going to hit OK. And now, don't forget, it was 220 milliamps. There we go. OK, it's spraying liquid. As you can see, I'm trying not to get water all over my bench, but there we go. It's actually pretty strong. And now you'll see we have almost 500 uh, milliamps drawn. So it's it's more than twice what it was, or around twice what it was. Let's hit set. We're going to bring this up to 5 volts just to see how much it would pull from a power bank, for example. Okay, uh, almost an amp. So yeah, most power banks you'd be able to run this from, or even a USB wall adapter, although not for very long. If you pull an amp constantly from a power bank, you'll probably uh, drain it pretty quickly. And it does spray pretty nicely. It's good. And now we'll go up to its maximum, 6 volts. Overshot a little bit there. And here it goes. 1100 um, milliamps, so 1.1 amps. That's interesting. So approximate wattage of this is 6.6, uh, .6, almost 7 watts. That's not too bad. Let's try pushing it a little bit. I'll put it up to, let's say, 9 volts, and I'll just hold it there for an instant. I won't, uh, won't keep it there too long. Here it goes. Almost two amps there. Just gonna give it a second to cool down. We're gonna give it another shot. Take a look at the amperage draw here. There's a bit more uh, current that's pulled at the beginning, but then as the electro the um, counter EMF hits, it'll slow down. Also, these alligator clips are very crappy, so I don't know. They're probably like resisting quite a bit of current here. But let's try it one more time. There we go. Nearly two amps. So this is definitely further, like, pushed harder than uh, Alice 110 1983 is saying to do it. But, you know, we had to give it a shot. That's pretty cool. Let's move on to the next item. And the last item are these. So this is 50 pieces of this uh, dip, 4 pin dip chip, and I don't know if you can read that or not, but these are PC817 octocouplers. An octocoupler is basically an LED that shines into the base of a transistor, which is activated by light. And so there's a transistor on one side, an LED on the other. And there's only light that goes from one side to another. So you can use this to isolate circuits from one another, have completely different circuits that are not electrically connected, such as like when you want to convert 110 volts or 220 volts or whatever it is 
down to a small DC voltage, you can control that uh, the current going through with one of these octocouplers. So the small voltage can control the large voltage without being afraid of the high voltage creeping across the track. So these are pretty useful. I'm going to grab some breadboard and we'll see if we can make them work. So here I have a breadboard with my PC817 um, octocoupler. And how an octocoupler works, or how it looks like in the diagram at least, sort of like this. Okay, this here, there's a dot here, which is that dot right there, if you can see. Uh, and then here, one pin, two pins, three pins, four pins. And what it is here is that in here, there is an LED in this direction. And then in here, there is a transistor, which is a NPN transistor with an arrow in this direction. And so when you power this LED, it, mind you, it doesn't take very much power. You need to uh, limit the current on this one. There's no current limiting resistor built in. The light shining on the base of this transistor will allow current to flow through here. And again, this is very little current, maybe about 30 milliamps we can use. Okay, so not very much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this here, put a resistor, 470 ohms to ground, like that. And then I'm gonna take here a switch, micro switch in our case, to five volts positive. And then on this side here, I'm just gonna do a LED that from 5 volts positive connected to here and then through here another resistor 470 ohms to ground this is how I want to set up my circuit and technically if this is done right when I hit this switch there should be somewhere around you know somewhere around 1 milliamp uh, going through here and there should be somewhere around 1 milliamp going through here so this LED here will light but kind of dimly which will be perfect because it'll show us that it works and it won't be super bright to dazzle the camera so let's try this out I have this all set up I'm gonna take my LED here uh, long leg is this one goes into the positive so I'm gonna go right directly up to this pin here. So right into the positive. And then this is my 470 ohm resistor right here. I'm gonna set this up into this leg to negative right there. Okay, so we got LED and resistor. Now this side is a little bit more complex. I have my micro switch here. This here is the common pin. This is the normally open pin, so there's no continuity between these two until you press down on this lever. And this one's normally closed. I'm not gonna use this one, only these two. So I'm gonna set up so this pin here lines up with pin one of my octocoupler. This thing is actually, it's supposed to be breadboard compatible, but it doesn't fit super well in breadboards. There's my switch, and now I'm gonna take a jumper and I'm going to move so this is pin one I want to go to this one the normally open contact see what I mean this thing kind of wants to fly out and hook that up to plus five volts now if I did everything right when I put my 470 ohm resistor over at the bottom here from the pin two to ground nothing should happen. So right now, everything's working perfectly. The diagram looks like this, our switch is open, etc. But when I press down on here, 
I should be closing my circuit here, which is causing light inside this package, you won't be able to see it, to travel across the package to these two pins and allow current to flow down this circuit, which is open only by the fact that this transistor is not active. So moment of truth, I'll try to put it so you can see. There we go. It works. And since this is a transistor and it's an LED in a transistor, basically um, the signal crosses from here to here at the speed of light. And the fact that there's like no space here means it travels very quickly. So if I hold down the switch here, as fast as I can click this switch, it will switch on and off. So this is good for high speed um, signaling. Maybe not in the megahertz range, you'd have to check the data sheet, but yeah. So these things work. These, these were 50 of these for uh, two bucks. So $2 for 50, very inexpensive. And again, from Alice 110, 1983. And this pile of treasure constitutes today's Alice 110, 1983 edition of Mailbag. Thanks for watching.